people. Today, I want to share some stuff with you, some insights, some things that I've come across, some things that have been heavy on my mind. This is from Lyle M. Smith. I got this last week. Thanks for the YouTube video on buying gold and silver at garage sales. Every weekend, I go garage and yard sale, and I get gold every time. I actually don't really sell it, but I repurpose it by mailing it down and making jewelry. I got some really good scores. The profits were anywhere from 100 bucks to one time in Victorian gold and seven old mine cut pinwheel brooch valued at 1400 Now, I get these kinds of comments frequently. I'm going to show you another one. Uh, this was 2013. The video has been up for a long time. I want to thank you very much for making this video. About a year ago, I was in a desperate situation. I was looking for anything that would help me get out the hole, and I came across this video. I took your advice and started going to garage sales with my wife around May 2012, to be exact. It turns out that we finished with a net profit of $14,000 for 2012 just from buying gold and silver at garage sales every Saturday from 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. and having a great time together. Thank you. Now... You know, what these two uh, wonderful notes, because I got many, many notes from this video. And it's uh, how to find gold at garage sale and estate sales. A few tips. I did this video 2011. Now, what I'm beginning to understand <clears throat> is you guys don't need any more in information. I think you need to use the information that is presented to you because like I said, I've gotten, more, I've gotten these notes every now and then I get these notes from someone who watches the video and speaks less and take action. <clears throat> this is the thing that people have got to do is take action, speak less, take action. And this is something that I'm not really seeing a lot of people do because I, I will tell you, I'm kind of caught up in my feelings. Today, I'm doing something different. Uh, probably going to do this for the next four or five Sundays in a row. I'm just uploading a crazy amount of content just to waken the channel up to get more people, new people who will take action because the information is awesome. There's not a problem with the information. The problem is that a lot of y'all don't want to do it. You don't want to do Craigslist. You don't want to go to garage sales. You just don't want to do it because it requires you to get up and do something. And I'm sitting here going like, you know, I've put out all of this content, this training, and I have some people who take the training and <clears throat> transform their lives. And I have some people who, well, one of the things that happened when I gave away all those courses and I had all those people sign up, they never opened up a course. These are the H Hung Hustler Kung Fu losers. Every time I send out an email on that list, I get a bunch of them it's like, hey, I ain't interested. Go back and check and see they got the 19 free courses and they never took advantage. What is wrong with people that... When someone who with a proven track record, I'm a person you can Google. You, you know, I didn't just drop out of a, a spaceship yesterday. I've been around a while. There's, there's receipts. And people, some people, help me out. Why are some people still not taking advantage? I, I really want to know. And people, some people... I really want to understand what is the problem. Why there are so many people who are not taking advantage of this money making information. Uh, could it be YouTube? You know, YouTube and I are having a little micro war where, you know, that my channel has been disavowed. And even with that, I still make close to two to three thousand dollars a month AdSense. And, 
you know, I would be doing much better if I was one of the chosen ones. But we don't cry over spilled milk. We go forward and we do the best that we can each and every day. And like this topic here, do more, talk less, how to change your finances. Not a lot of people are signing in. If I was talking about Big Booty Betty, oh man, they'd be lined up. So one of the things that I want to present is we're going to get into some remedial education. The, the content's solid. The training is solid. What is that magical, mythical thing that I need to do or that 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 whip I can crack to get you guys busy because, you know, the inverted euro cut curve. Um, <clears throat> we're in a recession right now. And what's going to happen is in the next six months, you're going to get all kinds of bad uh, reports and stuff. And, you know, and just before the election, they're going to like call the recession. So what is, um, Let's see. What is it that, because you know, I was the guy, I had this series of videos called Recession Talk. I was trying to get you guys ready because it was coming and it's here now. What's the best course for learning the administrative side of the business? I don't need hustling aspect. I can use a course to tighten up 30 days to 2,500. I don't sell life insurance. I'm not going to talk about selling life insurance. I, I have no, I used to sell life insurance a long time ago, but not, not my thing. I've heard that many people have been extremely profitable for selling life insurance. It's just something I don't do. And I don't talk about things I don't do or have not done. So one of the things that, you know, you guys have got to do is take the courses and you've got to go over them with a serious intent and a serious attitude because I want you guys to win. I want you guys to have more money than you need. I want you guys to pay all your bills and still have thousands of dollars in the bank. That's that's the way you should be living. All right. I mean, who here? wants to pay all of the bills and still have thousands of dollars left in the bank. Raise your hand. And this is something that could be done if you do more, talk less. How to change your finances, how to change your life. If you become an action-oriented person, all about action points, just doing, doing more than you're talking, just putting it out there. Because one of the things that I'm thinking about doing is a morning session uh, where I go over the courses and tone you answer questions because there are a lot of people out here who, who have a lot of questions. And these questions prevent them from going forward because they're stuck on one little area. So this is one of the things that, you know, I may have to do. Thank you, Paul, for the $2 super chat. Appreciate you. So, and, the, you know, and I know the, the topics have been rather boring. This is the stuff you have to do to be successful. This is what I'm giving you. Hard work, consistency, and people just want excitement. You can't cor course correct if you're not going anywhere. Lewis Sutton, your videos about pathologically cheap really impacted me. Being cheap has affected my business and my mindset. Yeah, because, you know, that, that's that old millionaire next door um, line. That, you know, the millionaire next door to you, he drives a Ford truck, buys some suits from J.C. Penney's. He ain't really that much different than you. Um, let me let me show you what I put on my Facebook page today. 
because I keep going after this. Because, you know, I live in a neighborhood with a lot of millionaires. And they, there ain't no millionaire next door stuff going on over here. I think because there are so many people with money that they can be themselves and they don't have to hide. Yeah, that's a pink limo for a girl's birthday party. Someone on the street rented that for their daughter. And a few months ago, there was someone having a party and they invited everybody from the neighborhood and they had horse and pony rides. This ain't that millionaire next door stuff. I'm, I'm trying to tell you. All right. Lewis Sutton. Yeah, because the thing is, pathologically cheap is a scarcity mindset. And it's going to crop up in your business decisions. It's going to be a problem. Thank you, Ice Turner. It's going to be a problem sooner or later. And I'm going to tell you what, like, give you an example. When I was on the storage auction trail, I would watch and study people. And I noticed that people who spend a lot of money, whether they won or lost, sometimes they lost, were able to consistently do that. And people who bought on what they could afford or what they can move never got above their fighting weight. They never actually moved up to the next level. Because I, I sat there and analyzed, I like Snowball, the Clampets, they all keep spending crazy amounts of money on these units and they keep doing it. So I started doing it, which is called modeling. And I began to find out that the larger units were disproportionately cheaper than the smaller units. I don't know how many times I bought a unit, 10 by 20, 10 by 30, first five feet, I had my money back, plus another 15, 25, or 30 feet to go. So this is one of the things. Uh, thanks, Lewis, for the $100 super chat. Appreciate that. So this is, you know, the stuff in these courses are real business lessons come from um, real business. And I, I need to say something that uh, article I was reading today that was talking about it was better to be born rich than to be born smart. And that article left me feeling some kind of way because um, I was born smart, not rich. And I was able to transcend my background. I was able to get to another level. Here it is. Georgetown study. To succeed in America is better to be born rich than smart. And they go through this article and they talk about a lot of stuff that I have seen. Good, good example. When I, when I used to work for this company, there was this guy who was one of the owners and he was so like, you know, I, I'm a great salesman. I've sold a lot of stuff, blah, blah, blah. Come to find out his father had started the company 35 years prior and left it to him with its intact credit rating, bank accounts, because, you know, it was his father. He stayed on the corporate papers, even though he retired. So he got a 35 year old multimillion dollar company. I remember he was like, I got to go home. You know, I got to clean up the bathrooms. We got five bathrooms and stuff. And I just used to listen to this stuff. And honestly, he was no smarter than me. 
He really wasn't. But because he was born in this situation, he had that life. He didn't have to do well in school. He didn't have to get good grades. Dad left him the company. And I'm beginning to see the challenge that many of y'all have moving to the next level. Because I went from abject poverty to the 1%. Now, that happens in America, only in America. That happens a lot. I mean, in America, this is this, this, there's many stories like that. But there are not as many as there could be because people are missing critical information. One of the things is you got to do more. And this creates a problem for some people who are, they're looking at someone else. Like if someone was looking at Scott talking about, um, you know, that's an article there. Thanks for the $30, Super Ron, Super Chat Ron. See, the pathway is rooted in education, but not so much a college degree. The education that I got was in interpersonal relationships and in knowing the social laws. Like when I got that job at Rent a Crate, I got it through planning, Scheme Incorporated. I sat down, constructed a plan. I thought outside the box. I did things that I did not have permission for because there are many people who would look for permission to do that. I, I just took it upon myself to do it. And I found out how the real world works. And I used that to leverage myself into these other jobs. And this is the pathway. You got to go to school of personal development. If you go through a rigorous personal development course, you're going to be better than someone who goes to MBA school. Because the personal development is going to give you a much broader and applicable knowledge base. That's going to take you to another level. Scott Bevan. Yeah, I did that one, you know, years ago. Because, you know, the, whole, the thing is, hood mentality, you know, people like living in the hood because it's cheap. That's hood mentality. That's a scarcity mindset. Um. Many bad things can happen to you if you just live there. And including your kids, they're going to get some bad stuff. They're going to get some bad feedback. Lewis Sutton, education can take you places, but charisma can take you around the world. Ain't that true? Oh, man. Developing interpersonal relationships. How I got into office furniture, I was working at rent crate And we had this, um, we had to present at the Georgia World Congress Center for Neocon. It was a trade show for facility managers. And I mean, it was a swagged up. That's where I met Mario Fraley. We were the only two black folks presenting. And they had open bar after the event. And I met up with Lynn who got sloppy drunk. And I looked after Lynn and Lynn looked after me. She hooked me up with my first office furniture job. It was like, oh, I know a guy who's good on the phones. She, she walked me in. And see, this is something else too. When people are influenced, that like if someone's looking out for you, they're like, they ain't gonna put in the word. Lynn, told these people about me. She set up a meeting, which she attended. She walked me in by hand and they're like, this is the guy I told y'all about. He's a really, really good, good, good guy and blah, blah. See, I, I have seen that. I, I worked with a guy who was a Kappa and one of his frat brothers walked him into a job just like that. Boom, just like that. 
So when people are trying to help you, there's more than a good word. They will literally walk you in, walk your resume in there. Rod, for real estate, we have to take action or we won't get any, anything we want. Absolutely. Because once again, I think that you guys are kind of overloaded with information. There's too much information and not enough action. That's where I'm beginning to see because I just showed you two pieces of testimonials of how good my free video was. Dude made $14,000 off a free video. I laid out the template. I laid out what they had to do. I laid out what they had to say. So there are many people out there will disregard that information because it's free. They won't take it to heart. And the ones who did take it to heart their pockets are fatter. All you have to do is just follow instructions and have to reinvent the wheel and nothing like that. But one of the things that we have is um, a lack of complacency. complacency. Yep, overloaded with content that makes it hard to focus on what matters. Yeah, because today, Sunday's the only day that I'm going to upload this many videos just to start the week off, right? And just to test the YouTube algorithm. Goonies Girls, yep, information overlay, then too indecisive to start. So we're, we're kind of, you know, we're, we're kind of speaking in the same vein here. Because one of the things that I'm testing is the YouTube algorithm. Because these notifications... They're, they've been all over the map this week. Like, so, you know, one day I had 150 people. A lot of days I have a trouble getting out of 40 or 50 people. Rob, real estate, thank you. Rons, one connection led me to starting a business where my first two months netted me what I made in the previous year. This, this is what happened. Um, Mario, the connection I made with Mario saved my entrepreneur career. Uh, the Lynn Caldwell connection. She walked me into that job. I know this guy. He's a good guy. Hiring. That's what she said. She walked me into this job. And those are the kind of things that people leave out when they talk about stuff. I remember one of my networking lead, I used to get leads from this guy. He just flipped out. He used to work for CB Richard Ellis and he just kind of flipped out, went off the plantation. He just stopped showing up for work. And I remember I was talking to the guys about it and the guy just kept repeating. Uh, he's no longer with us. That's all he would say. He wouldn't give any real information. Like he went crazy. He went nuts. They don't talk about that. And one of the things trying to get in down to is the real information to make you guys successful, which is action. You must become about taking more action. You must become about, you know, doing the hard things like do more, talk less is how you change your finances and how you change your life. I didn't create some super clickbait title. I told you the truth. And this is one of the things that I, I kind of struggle from because I don't make the stuff flashy as I could, but that's not my intent. Goonies girl, everyone is in the network and how do you build successful interpersonal relationships? Well, Lynn got drunk and we had a hotel. So I took Lynn to the hotel and we got up to the room. She literally passed out. I just put her on the bed, left her clothes on, threw a blanket on her. And when she woke up about 12 o'clock that night, I was sitting there watching television. She woke up. She's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. She was freaked out. And then, you know, we became close because I actually took care of her. I went out of my way <clears throat> to make sure that nothing bad happened to her. And, you know, we're still friends to this day. To build interpersonal relationships, you got to put some skin in the game. 
And everyone that you put a little skin in the game is not going to reciprocate. Rons, when you handle your business, people are willing to refer you because you won't mess up their name. That is true. That is one of my. If I know that you're a yard bird, I will never refer you to anything. So the issue is don't be a yard bird. In your life spheres, I like how you bring facts based on your experience. Your experience is based on verifiable business models. Appreciate that. And, you know, this is why this channel isn't that big, because I tell the truth. I don't tell you that you're going to start a Shopify store and make a million dollars, even though there are people who've done it and they're very smart. Because going back to being born in an affluent family, if you look at the very first YouTubers, these were rich kids. Who had $1,000 for a camera for a kid? An affluent family. Uh, YouTube London took off because these were like rich little London kids with these accents. So you, you've got all of this stuff that goes into becoming um, successful. You got to take action. You must engage in personal development. It's a must because if who you were currently was going to get you the results that you wanted, you would have them already. So there's something in you that's going to have to change. Like what I had to do was revamp my whole spirit. Uh, when I was in that boarding house, I did not leave that boarding house the person who had entered. I changed a lot of things. A lot of value systems got rearranged. Goonies girls, yep, you tell the truth and sometimes it hurts. You had one life that pissed me off, but I'm back because you keep it real and that's what I need to hear. Thanks. Oh, man, like today, I got some stuff up that, you know, I got people all up in their feelings because essentially, if you want to live a certain kind of life, there are certain rules that you must follow. And this is one channel I was watching. And it just shows people living a good life, spending money, but it doesn't show how they make that money, which is interesting. Thank you, Ron's watching you. It's watching someone who's playing the long game, right? Doers can implement your trainings, increase their income and spend more time with you later. Yeah, because that's the thing. You, you actually got to do some stuff. And I'm trying to figure out what is going on with the YouTube notifications because, you know, it's five o'clock on the Sunday afternoon. There should be more people here than this. Once again, YouTube and I are having a battle. And honestly, the pre-recorded videos have been doing better than the live streams. People like comforting lies instead of hurtful truths. Isn't that, isn't that the gospel? In your life, so just saw a video on the guy who made 35 profit off shopping, Shopify drop skipping, but he had to spend 140K in Aspen to get it. Wow. Rod for real. I just found this on my own today. YouTube is hating on you. Oh, no, I, I, I know I've got this, this problem. You have to check out Discord. It's very interesting because I got a lot of people subscribe to this channel, but only a handful get these notifications. It is kind of strange. How that happens.
let me do something real quick and see if this changes the uh, the calculus a little bit. Let's see. I'm going to send this message out real quick. Just hold on a second. Because, you know, a lot of people need to see this. And, you know, I used to like the text notification. But what happened with that was you can't use it for the things that I talk about. It's kind of crazy. All right, so that went out. Let's see if these numbers change a little bit. Tony Crump, I had to search several times to get to your live feed. YouTube's Hayden. Engineer life skill. I get the notifications for the streams about the end. That's that's usually in an hour. That's funny, Rod, for real estate. DF's King, the Uncle G, you don't get enough credit. I started watching in 2006, wanted to make 500 on size hustles. I made 6K in three years in ways to start my own hair weed business this year. Awesome. Wow, Gene. That's funny, Jusco31. Yeah, YouTube's a hater. I mean, you know, it goes without saying, YouTube chooses who they want to promote. And I've noticed that the live streams have been seriously lagging the last four weeks. And I was just like, is it me or is it YouTube? And it's apparently YouTube. Because this is one of the reasons how I know my content's good. When I put paid traffic on it, an ad that interrupts people, and I get 72 to 82% watch through rate, the content's good. But for some reason, you know, YouTube is, uh, DF's Kingdoms, I, I think one of the reasons you got the notification today is because I uploaded all those other videos. That tends to wake up YouTube, so we will see. Because one of the things is, if you do the work, you can change your life. Because I'm not going to say just that it's, it's more than hard work. It's strategy. This is what led me out of the boarding house. When I became strategic in my thinking is when I came up with that plan to get a higher paying job. And I executed. I was strategic. And I executed and I took action. I went home that day. I, I didn't even go to sleep. I was up to about four o'clock in the morning working on that. And there's something else, too, that when you have this drive, you have this big thing, it seems like you don't get tired as fast. Because, you know, I didn't have anywhere to go the next day, so it was no problem. Anthony Johnson, me and my cousin are scaling up our mobile wash quick. We had clients that want to pay 130 for our details. All right. Rod, I just got the notification you sent. I just sent out one.
Tony Crump, well, I need to do YouTube videos, but I feel silly talking to a camera. But like doing the podcast or something in nature, I'm more relaxed. Anthony Johnson, that's wild. Once again, you should go after all money. I mean, you want Asian money, you want white money, you want black, you want all money. And I think this is something that many black entrepreneurs automatically do is they pigeonhole themselves and you shouldn't do that. You should not do that. Because the world is a marketplace. And if you have services, the world is, could be your customer. Because look at all the crazy businesses you know of that are in business making money. This is another thing. A lot of people just don't have belief in self, a belief in their abilities, a belief in their product, belief in what they're doing, which is very, very important if you want to be successful. Because what I have found out through research is people who take my courses with a positive attitude do better than folks like, I hope this works. It, it is very interesting how that works out. So your mindset is super important for you to be successful, for you to start something that can grow into a large concern. Because, um, you know, for many folks, I've straightened it out because a lot of folks were asking me, hey, Glenn, I just found you. Where do I start? Under the video is a pathway to where you can start. Step by step courses are affordable. Because I care about you. Intention is everything, man. Ron's intention is everything. And that's what got me out of my situation, because once I changed my thinking, I changed my situation. Uh, the first half of that boarding house, I was just like, how did I get there? Oh, God, why have you forsaken thee? I mean, it was just a lot to deal with. And then I became more strategic and I went out and I got Tony Robbins Unlimited Power, Earl Nightingale Lead the Feel the power of your subconscious mind. And I know some people get tired of me saying that, but the thing is, the basics always work. Earl Nightingale created this course in the 50s. The 50s. And it was applicable to me in the 90s. Once again, I don't think it's about new information. I think it's about taking the information and using it because um, one thing that is super powerful is when you make a decision to be successful, not when you hope to be successful, but when you make a decision to be successful, we say, I'm going to be the successful doing X, Y, and Z. It's remarkable how that shapes your whole posture going into it. It is crazy. Also, it's like magic. When you set up and frame out because I don't have my uh, phone with me. But I'm listening to the compound effect on Audible. And I was listening to uh, the first chapter and he talked about some stuff. And I realized that I had used the compound effect <coughs> to get out of that boarding house. That's when I started becoming successful because I went through a period of heavy meditation and that really got my mind right. That really cleared out the cobwebs. I remember one morning I decided to go for an hour. 
I started to see stuff. It was crazy. I've never done that again. But I had taken charge of my mental environment. I had taken charge of my personal internal situation. Like um, in, in the neighborhood, there were people who would not associate with me because they thought I was a cop because I shaved. And I, I had a clean cut appearance and I, I never grew out an afro or nothing like that. Ron's principles remain constant, only practices change. How the principles are acted out change with technology. Yeah, because the thing is, Earl Nightingale, that course was probably. 35, 40 years old when I got to it. And I think people are looking for something new and fresh versus something stable. Because in the compound effect, it was talking about that if you make small, you know, because I, I actually said something simpler. I was like, well, it was kind of weird. It's like if you act like cancer, you know, cancer is just relentless. It just keeps growing and growing a little bit of a day. Uh, I knew of someone's grandfather. He had prostate cancer for 45 years. He just decided it wasn't going to kill him. That was one of the things that you have to look at. But you have to be consistent in action and thought and showing up. Thank you, Tony Crump. I listen to your audio book bag for five times a day. Awesome. Because one of the things that is very important is action. You know, many people like to bring out the law of attraction. The law of attraction is a real thing and it can work. I remember I had wrote down some goals when I lived in the East Point house and I wrote them down and I put them in a drawer. That's all I did. When I was moving, I found those goals and I realized I had accomplished every one of them over the months. But when I started writing goals and having like the power of six behind it, I got things done much, 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 much faster. I realized these goals much faster. So there is a part to that. You know, action is everything. And, you know, once we get into the training of the men's channel, which will probably start next week, we're gonna, it's going to be very action-based. Ron, has been listening to Lead to Field for 20 years. The tape about the young couple in Acres of Diamonds took away my excuses. I started when, uh, where I was, whatever opportunity I had at hand. And that's a very key point. Start right now. Don't wait until you get your money right. Don't wait until situations change. Start doing what you can right now with what you have. I started a YouTube channel with the only camera I had. I didn't realize that, you know, 720p was HD. I was recording in standard definition. <laughs> Thus, my YouTube journey. Start. Get started. Get started. I mean, you know, if you go look up Jeff Bezos first year, they lost money. He did not really. Let's see. First year in business. And I know Amazon was named something else. Jeff Bezos initially incorporated the company in Washington State with the name Cadabra Inc. He later changed the name to Amazon a few months later after a lawyer misheard his original name as Cadaver. 
I want you. Yeah, it wasn't even named Amazon in the beginning. He started this in his uh, garage. Let's see how much money they started with. Uh, the year was 1994, and Bezos was working diligently on Wall Street. At 30 years old, he began to see the Internet revolution taking place and made the decision to quit his job and start an Internet company. The wake-up call was finding this statistic, the startling statistic that web usage in the spring of 1994 was growing at 200, 2,300% a year. You know things just don't grow that fast. It's highly unusual, and that started me thinking, what kind of business plan makes sense in the context of that growth? After making a list of top 20 products he could potentially sell on the internet, he decided to sell on books because they're low cost and universal demand. It turns out it was just the beginning. Now, Bezos' people had some money. As a child, he spent summers at his grandfather's ranch in southern Texas, laying pipe, vaccinating cattle, fixing windmills. The 18 year old Bezos said he wanted to build space hotels, amusement parks, and colonies for two to three million people who would be in orbit. The whole idea to preserve the earth, he told the newspaper, the goal was able to evacuate humans. The planet would become a park. The initial startup capital came from his parents' personal savings. And remember what I said. It was better to be born rich than smart. Here we go. How many of you can go to your parents and say, hey, I need thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000? The first initial startup capital for Amazon.com came primarily from my parents, and they invested a large fraction of their life savings in what became Amazon.com. And you know, this was a very bold and trusting thing for them to do because they didn't know. My dad's first question was, what's the internet? Okay, so he wasn't making a bet on this company or this concept. He was making a bet on his son, as was my mother. So I told him that I thought, there was a 70% chance they would lose their whole investment, which was a few hundred thousand dollars, and they did it anyway. Jeff Bezos' parents were wealthy, that they would, could get their hands on a few hundred thousand dollars to give to him for his company. Amazon raised a series of $8 million from Klein Perkins in 1995. 1997, Amazon went public to raise additional capital. Within two months, Amazon sales were up to 20,000 a week. However, the company had continued to plot their revenue back in the growth. The chart below this picks. They put that money back in the company. But that's very interesting that his parents just happened to have 200K laying around to put into his business. Amazon lost money for decades and these sales fit off those losses like Vulture off of a corpse and where are they now? In light alpha fitness, thanks for the $20 super chat. Just wanted to say thanks for all the great info. Just your free content has helped me so much with how I approach my business and essentially the advice you're giving on the mail channel to help with women. Now, Facebook was the Facebook. That's true. He did. I didn't know Bill K started with like 300K. But once again, he was able to go to his mom and dad and get that money. And they gave him $200,000 and they kept living the way they were living. His parents were wealthy. And this is one of the things that gets lost because, you know, look at my situation. I didn't have anyone in the family I could get any money from. This was 100% on me. And I was able to do it and climb out of the lower ranks. However,
Goonies girls, if a person does ha have access to capital, then what are your thoughts about crowdsource funding at attaining funds from micro investors? <clears throat> Zuckerberg was around the Harvard elite. Uh, once again, I was able to organically fund. However, I've seen companies grow like crazy from micro funding, like Kickstarter, like uh, the boosted board was a Kickstarter project. Uh, 2012 is when they did that. So here's an example of something that was crowdfunded. Boosted boards, the world's lightest electric vehicle. Light enough to carry anywhere, anywhere fast enough to go everywhere. A revolution in power, combination of portability and power. 1,110 backers pledged $467,000 to help this project. So, and Boosted now has uh, the scooter. So, definitely it works. If you need that money, or you could start an investment club. You can go out and talk to people and say, hey, Ron's Bill Gates went to a private school. Because once again, Bill Gates and Jeff Bezos came from affluent families. Bill Gates' father was an attorney. And once again, this you keep seeing this because one of the best things you can do for your children is to become affluent because one of the things they talked about is at some point all kids struggle and where people with means their kids get picked up because they can afford tutors they can afford people to help them whereas poor kids get left behind i mean it's very very interesting And there are so many ways to get capital today. You could pre-sell your product. You could pre-sell your, your fashion line. There's a lot of ways to do that. Rod, Bill has never been broke in his life. Nope. He don't even know what broke looks like. Bezos doesn't either. Now, um, Steve Jobs actually was broke at times but bill mm -mm. and this is one of the things if you're a parent or you plan on having children you want to get as wealthy as you can before you have these kids because you know like my story there are a few people who slip through the cracks and make it but this is you know my story is very atypical statistically i supposed to be working at a factory in Birmingham. I'm not supposed to, you know, I got a lot of friends who, who've just reached retirement age. A lot of people I went to school with, I see the jobs they had. That was my, you know, future if I didn't have an active intention to get the heck out of Alabama. Lewis Sutton Buffett doesn't either. Nope. Because when you look at these guys' backstory, you see that they had advantageous childhoods. They didn't grow up in no hood. They didn't grow up in, a, in a, an environment of lack. They grew up in positive, enriched environments. Yeah, we're just doing this on Sundays. We won't do this the rest of the week. But one of the things that you have to look at, and one of the things I've seen around here is these kids are pampered, well taken care of, 
and they act like kids. They don't act beyond their age. And this is being in this cocoon of wealth because that's what it is. I mean, you just go up the street and, you know, bust the left. You, you run into mansions, not, you know, mansions on three or four acres. And these kids around here, some of them know how good they have it. Some of them don't. So that's just one of the things you have to understand. But you got to be about action. You got to be about diligent, copious, hard action. That's, you know, if you want to change your life, speak less, do more. Because, I mean, just showing up and trying to do some things can have a remarkable effect on you. Just showing up, just saying, I'm going to do this, volunteering for stuff. One thing I learned in the military, I used to volunteer for everything. And they were like, hey, we need X amount of soldiers to do this, this. I like, raise my hand. This is how I got to speak with some Korean school teachers. This is how I got to go advance parties in Japan. Raise your hand. A lot of people are like, man, don't volunteer. They're just going to use you. It's not true. You can get invaluable experience from volunteering and being a person who's willing to take a risk. Because I volunteer for everything. So one of the things that you need to do is start taking daily actions. Whatever you want to do. Let's say you want to start a multi-million dollar company. You write that on a sheet of paper. Multi-million dollar company. Then you go through the processes of things you got to do, because even if you don't have no money, there's something you can do that can move you to that multi-million dollar company today. You're going to need a business plan. You're going to need employees. You're going to need to be the talk. You're going to be the develop sales skills. There's this one guy, Max Chewing. He's got a clothing line, which he used YouTube to promote. Uh, dude is not 30 years old and if he ain't a millionaire he's close because you know it was just like you know i have to keep hundreds of thousands of dollars in the bank to order a wire wire money to these clothing companies to get them to print stuff up this guy built a brand on the internet his dude uh christian guzman built a brand on the internet athlete clothing and these guys really network and they be like, well, this is how I'm doing it. This is how I'm doing it. They don't hold back secrets. So another thing you need to do is find you a positive tribe of entrepreneurs, of people, of action takers. Because if you're just surrounded by people who don't take action, who, well, you know, I'm going to do that next year. You know, and you, you got that dude or that chick who's been talking about starting a business for 12 years and they never started I'm not saying don't be no longer no longer be their friend, but you got to go ahead and enhance your circle of people. Paul Brown, yeah, I was gonna finish the free ebook, all these nuggets today. <clears throat> well, this is gonna be the last thing for the day right here. If nothing else, develop the capacity, put in a massive amount of work, and that's one of the things that got me to where I was. I was always willing to put in the work. When I went to Ken and like, hey, you want to sell this? He like, no. And I was like, I sold it on my own. And I had plenty of customers because, you know, and this is what led me to the storage auction business. It was so easy to sell a used stuff because the price was right. It was just like, I was like, man, this is, it was like selling pancakes to hungry people. I was like, I got to get me some more of this used stuff because new stuff, it sells, but it doesn't sell as fast as used stuff. I was amazed. And also, I was able to take advantage of my office furniture knowledge because in these storage units, Sometimes people will have two, three, four, or five units rented full of office furniture. I would get these units for five bucks. 
because no one knew, no one wanted to move all that stuff. It was big and heavy. I remember I got <clears throat> some Herman Milo Etho space, which is very specialized um, modular furniture. And I knew one guy in town who dealt with it and I sold it all to him. I was like, hey, I've got three storage units full of Etho space. What do you give me for it? And he said, I gotta look at it. And I'm like, all right. So we met out there and I st he started getting all like, woo. He's like, he's like, how much you want? I was like, 10,000. And he's like, all right. $10,000 for some units I bought for $15. So once again, you got to skill yourself up. You've got to get as many data points that come from action. Darren Lee, I live in Louisiana where they glorify plant workers. That was going to be my um, mission. That was going to be my where I ended up. When I was growing up, my mom used to date this guy named Buddy who worked at the Jim Dandy Grits plant. And he, he was telling me, he's like, man, you know, when you get of age, I can put in the word for you at the plant. But he had to, you know, he used to smoke these cigars. He had a like Cadillac and everything. He was a nice guy. But I didn't want to work in the Jim Dandy Grits factory. What's up, 285 property? The Jews you drop come from hours upon hours of hammering your car. Oh, yeah. I'm about to work on some more stuff, too. Create some more content. Do things a little differently. Let's see. Where are we? All right. So what I want you guys to do, who are paying attention, there is a blueprint under the video, under the live stream. So it teaches you, go ahead and get your free audio book and then start going through this pathway to build up your foundation and then take the appropriate courses so you can start making some money. BT the creator. I know um, for Louisiana, I know a lot of people in their 20s in the plants won't become an agent. Yeah, I wasn't going to go in the coal mine. I wasn't going to work in the Jim, Grant, Jim Dandy Grits factory, and I wasn't going to work in the steel plant. I just felt that I can do more. So for those of you who want to take action today, go below, get your free audio book. Go ahead and get your first courses, get your foundational courses, and begin working on that and setting yourself up for future success. So with that, I'll see you guys later.